When we first went through the tour of Photoshop, we covered all of the tools and what they do in the toolbar. Um, so we did cover some of the basic retouching tools like the healing brush tool, the spot healing tool. We're going to go over those again, but get into a little bit more detail on how they work. This isn't a retouching course, so we're not going to get too advanced here, but we will cover the basics and how they can apply to um, retouching photos for composite photography. So right now we have the Gibson layer right here and we have our background layer right here. We're going to control J the Gibson layer to make a copy so that any adjustments we make, um, if we want to go back to our original version, we'll have the original version here. So for now, let's make some destructive edits on this Gibson copy layer. Let's go ahead and select the spot healing brush tool. Now remember this tool allows you to select an area that is, I guess an area you want to change and you can go through and select that area and Photoshop will fill it in with elements from the surrounding area and it will try to blend and match them together. So I have all these little freckles on my face. So if I wanted to go with the spot healing brush tool, I could get rid of these like that, which would be a real shame, but you know, that's how the tool works is why I want to show you this. And then I can get rid of these little wrinkles on my forehead like that. Sometimes you want to like go over, make sure you have everything covered, and then go over, try to make it a little less consistent, a little bit more randomized, so that you can't tell what's been done. If you zoom out here, you can tell it's slightly discolored where those wrinkles were and where we went over them. So it doesn't look great and it looks pretty fake. Um, and a lot of photographers will use this tool only to this extent. They'll, they'll make these basic changes and say, oh, well, look, now they're beautiful. And Basically, I want to teach you how you can use these tools while still keeping the original integrity of your subject intact. So if we turn off this layer, you can see the changes we've made. Humans don't go around without some wrinkles, right? Some little freckles. That's just what a face looks like. So if you go way overboard with this, you'll end up making something that looks more plastic, something that looks kind of blurred out. And it's not, it, no one's fooled by that is basically what I'm trying to tell you. Don't, don't try to make someone look plastic. Try to make them look like a human and try to make them look like the best versions of themselves. So a great use for this tool is if someone has the zit the day of a photo shoot and you want to get rid of that zit, that zit isn't really representative of what that person looks like, right? It's something that popped up on the day of the shoot and there's, there's no shame in trying to get rid of that, um, trying to make them look like more of themselves. But it's just so easy to go so overboard with some of these tools. And I want you to use caution as you learn them and as you apply them to your own photography. So if we look on here, remember we're making destructive edits. So this whole layer is being affected by these edits. And we have this saved layer underneath. So if we turn, on, turn off everything here, we can see the original layer. Um, what I want to show you is how you can make some of these changes in a non-destructive fashion. So I'll turn off this Gibson copy layer where we made some of those edits before. Now we just have the Gibson layer turned on. I'm going to add a blank layer above this. So add an empty layer and we'll call it healing brush. Now what we can do is let's move over to the healing brush tool. The spot healing brush tool is basically like the kindergarten version of the healing brush tool. It's dumbed down, it's way simpler, and you don't get to select your own source points where you want to clone from. And I'll explain that in a second. So if we click the healing brush tool, and now if we go here um, to brush, we'll get this little notification that we can't use it because we haven't um, defined a source point to use um, as our cloning point. So if I wanted to, let's just do the same thing. So if I wanted to remove this little wrinkle on my forehead, I want to fill it with what's just directly above it here, right? That's closest to it. That makes sense. So all I have to do is I'll click down above it and then click down here and you can see my brush as I move it is filled with that source point where I clicked. So if I'm here, it matches perfectly and then I can move it around and start painting with that area down here. And take a look at that little um, symbol above my paintbrush. That's showing where I'm painting from now. 
So as I move it back and forth, you can see exactly where I'm painting from onto my new area. If you use this tool a little bit too harshly, sometimes, like in that situation, you'd end with up with a pattern that looks like just two of the same line. So you really wanna be careful and make it look more randomized. So if I went over that line, I could then go below here and try to like fill it in with areas down here and then redefine my source point and try to randomize it a little bit more so that it doesn't look too fake and too, too much like the area above it. So you wanna make it a little bit more random. And now if we look here, it's, it's a little bit discolored, but in general, you can tell that the wrinkle is gone and now it just looks like skin. Now if I wanted to, oh, I was already doing the thing I wanted to show you. So I'll explain exactly what I was doing here. Up here, we have some different options for our tools. And right here where it says sampled or sample, you can choose either current layer, which is the default. So if I have a current layer selected and then I make a change on my current layer, um, those changes take a place. And then let's say, oh, I went way overboard. I want to undo those. Well, I, I can um, like edit undo them, but if it's a saved document, this is a destructive edit, right? So if I open up this document on a new day, I can't undo those changes. So right now I will because I still have them saved in my working document, but if I had saved that, I wouldn't be able to undo that. So what we do is we add a new blank layer above it, turn on that layer, and now we're going to make our adjustments to that layer by instead of clicking sample current layer, we'll click sample current and below. So now what I'll do is wherever I click here, we'll take a sample based on everything that's visible in the image. So if I didn't have current and below selected and I just did a current layer, take a sample here, it's gonna paint with absolutely nothing, right? Because there's nothing in that area of this layer. If I turn on the Gibson layer and I don't have it selected, but it's visible and I have sample current and below, now when I go to make a clone source point, it will base that selection on everything that's visible within my document right now. So then I paint and it paints along with that new source point on here. Like that. But it's not painting on the original layer. It's painting on this new layer that I created so if I turn off the Gibson layer, you can see those changes that we just made and the changes that we had made before to that little wrinkle in my face. Um, if I turn these off, you can see that the original layer is fully intact and there's been no changes made to any of the pixels on that original layer. So using a separate layer and then defining your sample as current and below allows you to make changes on a new layer so that you're not destructively editing your image. Now, there's another option here that says all layers, and I wanna caution you about this because all layers will allow you to make changes based on layers that are below your current layer or above it, just as long as they're visible. But if I had an adjustment layer, let's say I had a levels adjustment and I make this really extreme here. Now I go to my healing brush tool layer and I sample all layers. Now if I, let's go down here where we haven't worked yet. So if I wanna do something on the skin here, I'll define my source point there, start painting, and now you can see this really blown out adjustment that does not look good at all. What this has done is it has taken everything that's visible, so the Gibson layer, including the adjustment layer above um, the healing brush layer, and it has used that image to then paint on this new layer um, with the healing brush tool. But then, because this adjustment layer, the levels layer, is already above the healing brush layer, it basically is adding that effect twice to the image. And so it looks really blown out, it looks terrible. I mean, this already didn't look great, but you can see that in here, it's, a, it's painting on with that adjustment layer intact in the sample image and then applying the adjustment layer on top of the overall image again. So you're getting the effect twice. And so you wanna be careful with that. 
if I have the levels layer on, and then we go over here in paint and I sample current and below, it won't sample, it won't like take any information from the adjustment layer above this healing brush layer. So now if I sample here, you can see that the painting in my paintbrush, it is the image without the adjustment layer applied to it. So I make these adjustments. And now if I turn off the adjustment layer, those adjustments weren't applied when I made the corrections to my image um, with the healing brush tool. So the adjustment layer is only applied once over the other layers instead of twice as it would have been if I did sample all layers. So just be aware of that when you're working that if you do have adjustment layers up here, it will pick from them as it's making the adjustments to your overall image.